Okay, good morning everyone. This is Scott Anderson with AgriBest Feeds and I'm very excited to be able to present to you Sweet Pro and Redmond 101. We're looking at uh, kind of the how and why cattle are actually performing better on less forage with Sweet Pro and Redmond. As we get started, uh, what we do at AgriBest is we look at three general areas. First off, animal benefit and, and performance. Secondly, forage utilization how uh, cattle actually convert that forage to meat and milk and, and the value of that. And the third thing is producer profits. And I've got a, we we'll go over to our website. Um, let me pull that up here. I'm on a different computer this morning. So, let's see if I can get this pulled up correctly. Okay. Well, that must have been the wrong button. I apologize about that. Try again here. Okay, that one worked a little bit better. Now on this uh, home page, I want to point out a couple things. If you scroll down, on your, uh, to about halfway down this front page. Um, you'll have to scroll down on your computer. I'm not able to scroll down for you. But where it says uh, video um, there and, and it has two guys standing by the back of a pickup and Sweet Pro 2011 presentation. When you get a chance, that's an excellent video to watch. Uh, that's Bob Thornburg, trader of, of Sweet Pro, and our nutritionist, Dr. Abe Schaefer, visiting about the uniquenesses of Sweet Pro. So, uh, excellent to come alongside with um, more um, understanding on the basics of Sweet Pro. But I'm going to go up to the top uh, of the website here and click on the cattle button. And that'll take us over to our cattle page. Um, there it goes. Okay, and what I want you to uh, to bring your attention to is this net day cost when feeding sweet pro blocks. Uh, it's over on your right hand side uh, it prevented me from opening it I link did okay when we get through the presentation I'll come back and we'll do the we'll do the net day cost but that actually shows um, the cost of sweet pro where, where utilizing your forage better actually reduces your cost of your mineral, your protein, your energy supplement uh, down to pennies a day and sometimes through the hay savings you actually um, you're actually putting money in your pocket by utilizing the Sweet Pro and Redmond. So that's the net day cost and I'll, I'll come back if you can remind me at the end of the presentation to do that. Three basic nutritional needs that cattle and horses, uh, livestock in general have. Uh, it's the energy, the protein, and then all your vitamin and trace minerals. And in general, your hay and your forages, your grasses, provide uh, most of those, and in some cases, all of them. But in, in times, we need to add a supplement. So fill in the gaps where that grass and forage is lacking. So we come along with a good supplement program like uh, Sweet Pro. And in that supplement, there's energy, protein, vitamin minerals, and trace minerals that are there to support that grass. 
And then an interesting part with the Sweet Pro is not only do we support that grass, but we also extend it. So up here in the upper right hand corner is showing the um, TDN of this forage. We've got the TDN, total digestible nutrients, at 50. But when we add the Sweet Pro, and especially with the probiotin, the digestive aid, um, that actually raises that TDN up to that 60. Uh, get 25% more digestible nutrients out of that grass. And then we support the whole thing with the Redmond Natural Trace Mineral Salt, which is a complete trace mineral tune-up that consists of a, over 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals. So what we have is an excellent supplement program filling in the gaps where the grass is lacking, your forage is lacking. We have a forage extender, so we're getting more value out of the grass that you have, either standing grass or hay that you're feeding, and also an excellent safety net that's, that's uh, there for things that we may or may not even know that our cattle are, are needing or lacking. And a lot of times it's too late when we're able to see that they're needing something. Our target at Agribestin with our Sweet Pro is to target that digestive system. We think that if we can have a healthy, uh, efficient digestive system, then all the other systems are going to uh, fall into place. There will have a healthy reproductive system, healthy animals, healthy profits, um, your immune system, all of those different things come into place. So what I want to do as we look at this Sweet Pro 101, Redmond 101, is start by just building a Sweet Pro block for you. So what is actually in Sweet Pro? It starts with an excellent vitamin and mineral trace mineral package. About 50% of the minerals are chelated, so broken down outside the body, connected with a, um, uh, a protein so that that animal recognizes that mineral very readily and is able to utilize that. And uh, once again, excellent vitamin mineral trace mineral package. Then what we do is we come on to, uh, and this is different than what most supplements do, most supplements are either grain-based or a molasses-based, either a sugar or starch, and we'll get into the details of the differences on that. But what we come in is with a carrier of distiller's grains. So it's a dry distiller's grains with solubles and condensed distiller's solubles. And what this is is actually a um, complex carbohydrate that lines up better with forages. And especially for you guys in Nebraska, this is all um, old news for you, but uh, I just really like this picture because it gives us the process of the, the ethanol process where we get the distiller's grains from. So what happens is they start with corn, they run it through a hammer mill, they liquefy it, and then they add yeast, yeast and enzymes, and then put it into a big fermentation tank. And um, then they, just, they ferment the grains and that converts the starches into sugars um, and into the, to the, uh, that they're able to distill out for the ethanol. And about one third of the corn, all the nutrient part, is just condensed into this dry distiller's grains with solubles and condensed distiller solubles. So that process is basically pre-digesting that corn for the cattle. And uh, not only that, but it's very interesting that it's basically the same process that a cow actually uses or a horse uses, any ruminant uses, to break down their feed sources. They, take their feed in, run it through a hammer mill, their teeth, they chew it up, they liquefy it, they add heat, yeast and enzymes and then they put it into their fermentation tank, um, a rumen on the cow. Uh, a couple things happen in front of that on a horse before it gets back into the cecum, but very uh, interesting to see how that process works. And then the value of the distiller's grains is it's a multifaceted supplement. Uh, so you get the value of everything that that corn has just condensed threefold. So hugely valuable digestible fiber, that's that complex carbohydrate, um, great energy source, uh, high rumen degradable protein, protein that's utilized by the microbes in the rumen, 
and then a, a high rumen bypass protein that goes through the rumen and is actually used directly by that cow or calf for um, frame and, and um, uh, meat development as opposed to uh, growing the fat and then the fat that's actually in the corn and the values of that. So uh, excellent multifaceted supplement. Brings us back to um, what really separates us from everybody is our digestive aid. So uh, our digestive aid is fermented wheat, oats, barley, and flax. We actually run that through the exact uh, a very similar process, um, add, liquefy it, add yeast and enzymes, put it in a fermentation tank, and ferment that uh, the starch. So the starch is converted to the alcohol, and the alcohol then instead of being distilled off, we actually just blend that back into uh, the Sweet Pro block or the fresh start. And what we're seeing on that is the yeast and the enzymes are actually uh, still viable because we don't distill that alcohol um, for the, the heat factor would destroy most of those enzymes and yeast but in our probiotin, they're actually still viable. And so when those, the cattle ingest the sweet pro, those yeast and enzymes are able to go to work breaking down, uh, doing what they do to break down forages and to help the microbes break down the forages. And that's where we're getting up to 25% more feed efficiency on the um, cattle that are eating the sweet pro. Another thing I just want to mention real briefly here that you're building blocks of protein uh, are amino acids and each different grain source has a different amino acid profile and so where we utilize the value of distillers grains coming so coming from corn we get the amino acid profile from corn but we also get it from wheat oats barley and flax and that helps cattle and horses and sheep and goats and uh, ruminants in general to be able to utilize uh, the protein that's available there for them to perform at their optimum uh, uh, genetic potential. So then we take the, the Sweet Pro uh, and then we combine it or on the side we have this uh, Redmond Natural Trace Mineral Salt. It has 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals in crystalloid form and just an excellent uh, trace mineral. And that's our feeding program. This is a complete nutrition program. We take your forage plus the Sweet Pro plus the Redmond salt, and it's a complete balanced ration. And we're actually going to get 25% more digestible nutrients and protein and energy from your forage. That's an improved digestion that we're looking at. So I want to change gears just a little bit here and go with what's actually happening inside the, the cow in that rumen or in the cecum on a horse uh, and taking a look at that from the pH value. So over on your left hand side is the pH uh, and the pH between six and six and a half is the optimum uh, forage fermenter uh, pH. So for those microbes that break down those forages, that pH between six, six and a half is where they thrive and grow and multiply and are most efficient. If that pH goes down below that six, uh, we run out of the optimum into more of a subacute acidosis or a sick, uh, actually a sick uh, issue where, where there's all sorts of, of issues that can happen inside that ruminant. In the past, what we've done to add energy is use grains or molasses, starch or simple sugars. And what that does is it pulls down on your pH. So you have some decreased digestive efficiency. Now that's, uh, we've been able to kind of do some work around on that and be careful uh, that we don't feed too much too fast and all of those types of things. Uh, but there is that, uh, what's called the negative associative effect. And that's the negative effect of starch digesting on fiber digesting bacteria in the rumen. So there's actually different microbes, different bugs, that break down starches and sugars, then break down forages. Now, if we get too much 
starch too fast, our animals will go off feed, and we all know we want to avoid that. But the interesting part is down here in this five to five and a half is where most most infections and pathogens, uh, milk production drops off. We have problems getting our cattle bred back. Um, a lot of those issues are happen when that pH is in the that environment of that five to five and a half. If we can keep that pH up to that six to six and a half, we can basically eliminate most most of those issues, if not all of them, just by keeping the right environment for the microbes in the rumen. Now when we add energy through the sweet pro, the complex carbohydrates, we actually pull up on the pH. It's the same digestive bugs that break down your forages or breaking uh, sweet pro down, the complex carbohydrates, so there's no competition there. And it's actually a positive associative effect as opposed to a negative associative effect. So we have, we're having a positive effect of the fiber digesting bacteria in the rumen utilizing the sweet pro. And I'll show some pictures of that here in a minute. So that's basically uh, the negative associative effect and how it's uh, connecting there in the rumen. Now, for those of you who are horse owners out there, I won't spend a whole lot of time. We can, we can visit more on this in the future. But basically, as we look at the cecum on the horse, uh, as you can see, the pH value is basically the same for forage fermentation on taking care of the forages that are coming back into the cecum. But when they first, when horses, a um, much more complicated digestive system than a cow, um, kind of uh, they bring their forages in to the stomach and it's very acidic. So they start breaking their forages down and their feedstuffs down acidically and uh, then in the second half of the stomach, enzymatically. A couple of things just briefly here. Horses don't have an acid shutoff on their, on, uh, in their stomach, so their stomach is always producing acid. So if there's not forage um, continually in that stomach, that's where we get a lot of your um, ulcers and, and things like that is the acid has got to eat something, so it starts eating the stomach lining. And then um, also on the enzymatic Side, horses do not create their own or produce their own starch digesting uh, enzymes. They have to get those all from the outside, so they're not designed to break down starches and sugars. So one of the big issues, if you get uh, starches and sugars back into the cecum, you have some serious problems with horses. And if you don't get that pH up in that relatively short amount of time, up into that six, you've got a lot of digestive upset in your horses as, as well as uh, founder possibility, colic, so forth, so on. So anyway, the Sweet Pro, um, especially the horse products, the Equipride, Equilix, do a wonderful job throughout this whole process of being able to um, help that horse break their forages down correctly and kind of smooth that whole system out. Now I want to take a, a kind of a different look inside the rumen and actually look at the microbes in the rumen. So as we mentioned, there's uh, forage digesting microbes in the rumen, uh, and those are indicated by these little yellow donut looking like things. And when we add sweet pro, it's the same uh, microbes that, that digest sweet pro, when we add sweet pro, the number of microbes greatly increases. So by adding sweet pro and Redmond Natural Trace Mineral, the number of microbes increase greatly, and then also the health of those microbes increase because of the, once again, the Redmond Natural Trace Mineral salt has the 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals in there. So if we've got healthy, um, a lot of those microbes, that's that positive associative effect, and that's where we're getting forage digestion and feed efficiency increased by that 25%. On the flip side, uh, once again, with forages, the, the yellow donuts are forage digesting microbes, but when we add a molasses or a grain, there's different microbes. Not only does that pull down on your pH, but there's different microbes that have to 
be um, produced in that cow to be able to utilize and break that starch and sugar down. And what that is, uh, causes some competition in the rumen there, you lose feed efficiency, and that's that negative associative effect. Now I want to move into uh, kind of how to feed the sweet pro, kind of what our feeding program is. We've already talked about, uh, you know, three quarter of a pound to a pound and a quarter of sweet pro, and then free choice Redmond salt on the side as, as a feeding program with your forage and, of course, good clean water with them. But how do we get to that uh, three quarter of a pound to a pound and a quarter? We do that in two different ways. The first way is by choosing the right block for, uh, for your situation. So if on, uh, as you can see on the picture here, the, the blocks from the left to right go harder and more bitter and uh, that matches your grass or your hay. As your, as your grass is green and lush, we need a softer block to encourage them off of that soft, lush grass uh, to eat at least that three quarter of a pound so we can maximize the grass that they're eating. Uh, as that grass gets harder, or grass or hay gets harder, more bitter, uh, drier grass, then we need a harder block so that they uh, will still eat that three quarter pound to a pound and a quarter, but they will go off of that and then eat the like corn stalks and things like that to be able to utilize the value of the forage that's in front of them. So um, mature cattle, most of what we're what we sell now is the fiber mate 20, um, uh, pretty much over the region that we that we have represented here on the webinar today, uh, as well as the calf candy back for calves that have been weaned or uh, replacement heifers, either the calf candy, um, and then move on to the Sweet Pro 16. So as that consumption goes up over that three quarter pound, pound to a pound and a quarter, and you wanna slow that down, you just go to the next harder block to uh, slow that consumption down. Or if you're getting under consumption, you go to the softer blocks to, to increase the consumption. But then uh, this next part on the feeding plan is another area that just separates Sweet Pro from other supplements, uh, the starch and sugar-based supplements, because with a complex carbohydrate, you can actually space feed this product out. So in other words, you can, uh, uh, here this gives you an example of what feeding program you're looking for. So if everything's average, um, what I'm gonna look at is this 10 day, take one block for 25 head, would last 10 days at a 250 pound block. Um, so if I my cattle are average uh, body condition score, average size, I've got average forage, um, that's kind of our uh, kind of our target. If I've got some issues where I've got poor quality forage, uh, maybe I've got larger framed animals, um, um, or I'm trying to put some uh, body condition on my animals, then I'll actually go to a, a pound and a quarter. That would be one block would last 25 head eight days. Or if everything's uh, above average, um, uh, my forage is, is really good, cattle condition score is good, and I just want to cut back on, still get the value of the Sweet Pro, uh, but be able to uh, reduce some of the cost, I can go to three quarters of a pound, and one block would last uh, 25 head, 13 days. So then as we decide what, what we're wanting to utilize, then we just keep that daily consumption on target by utilizing space feeding or interval feeding. So what that means, is that the cattle, the way God's created them, is that they're able to utilize um, a protein load, a mineral load, and uh, take that in, utilize that over time. There's a lot of science behind that. Now, you gotta be careful with starches and sugars, back to that rumen pH and how that throws all of that off. You can't do that with a starch or sugar-based supplement, but with a complex carbohydrate, you can uh, space feed that out. So, so here's the example. 
Um, we're looking for one pound per head per day. So we put the block out on day one. We keep Redmond free choice in front of the cattle all the time. And of course, your uh, hey, if you're feeding that or, or that they're grazing, they've got their forage in front of them all the time and good clean water. But if that block or tub is empty, um, say day seven, they have all the minerals they need, they have all the protein they need to utilize that f over that full 10 day period. You would just put the next block out on day 10 and then um, they'll be ready to go again. So the one thing that we do, once again, we're feeding the microbes in the room and making the right environment for them. So we recommend men no more than five days without the supplementation. So if they happen to eat it really fast and go through it in, in three or four days, then I would recommend going out in 10 days or in five days from that, so on day eight or nine. Um, or when you first put them out, just put out a five-day supply instead of a 10-day supply, and uh, then you're always within that five-day window. So that's kind of the feeding plan and feeding program. Uh, I want to touch on kind of what's different and unique about the Redmond products here. Uh, once again, it's an excellent uh, trace mineral program that salt that comes alongside. The reason we recommend um, salt on the side is that Sweet Pro includes salt, but if they if cattle are mining the Sweet Pro for the salt value, it's an expensive salt block. And then of course with the value of of uh, Redmond that comes along with the 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals in crystalloid form. Um, well worth the couple extra cents to have that out in front of your cattle uh, all the time, uh, any livestock, as, as a matter of fact, on that. So a couple of things. The 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals, I'll kind of give you a quick screenshot of, of that here in a moment. But in crystalloid form, we've talked about uh, um, chelated minerals. And chelated minerals is when uh, a mineral is connected with uh, uh, is chelated in a way that that animal will be able to rec recognize that and utilize that mineral. Well, crystalloid is actually minerals that completely dissolve in liquid and penetrate through plant and animal membrane uh, on their own. So uh, this is the most bioavailable form of minerals that there are, and they're all in their natural form. We're not putting this together. so what we get is the synergy of the interaction of two or more elements. Here we've got 50 to 80 elements so that their combined value is greater than the sum of the individual parts. And we're seeing incredible things with the use of the Redmond minerals just on the health of herds across, uh, well, actually across the nation and the, the mineral value and the performance that's maximized. And we're seeing um, mineral cross reduced if, if, a, if a guy, well, like this next picture gives you um, the guaranteed analysis of the Redmond trace mineral. Uh, the top part is the guaranteed analysis, what's in there, but then the bottom part is typical, uh, but not guaranteed. But you can see um, 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals, and if they were to um, analyze that down, we probably have all of the elements because uh, all of the elements end up in, in the ocean. And it's very interesting that ocean water, um, the chemical analysis of ocean water and blood are almost identical other than blood has a hemoglobin in it. And so the, the value of these minerals in that balance is hugely important uh, for overall livestock health. We actually use it for uh, soil application for improving the fertility and quality of uh, crops that are grown and also for human, uh, actually the Redmond salt comes in a human form called real salt and uh, that's actually the number one health food selling salt in, in the nation. Um, this screenshot here just quickly looks at the value of utilizing the Redmond salt actually saves money, even though Redmond costs more than natural, than um, your white salt. But we're seeing that cattle actually eat less mineral uh, if you just have a loose mineral program out with the Redmond salt. 
we're kind of seeing uh, across the nation um, kind of this 50% less mineral eat, eaten over time as uh, the animals are on that Redmond salt and have their nutritional mineral plane all balanced out there. I uh, talked a little bit about the soil application and the um, Redmond um, real salt for the human site. So that kind of brings us kind of full circle. That's uh, kind of a, a quick overview of kind of the basics, the uh, basics of Sweet Pro and basics of Redmond and basics of AgriBest of what's best for that animal benefit and performance, uh, secondly forage utilization, and finally producer profits. But as we close today on the formal side of our presentation, what I, I want to do is look at that producer profit side of things. So what actually um, hits uh, the bottom line of the producer? There's a, basically four things that can happen. One is that you can have something that increases your cost where your revenue uh, or your return on that investment actually goes down. And we want to avoid those types of things as much as possible, as often as possible, because uh, that always has a negative effect on the bottom line uh, as we look at that. Another thing that we can look at is increasing the cost. So uh, what if I invest a little bit more here and my revenue goes up proportionately or more than that, then that's something I should really look at and evaluate. Um, is that a good investment and a good risk and return on my investment? Another thing that can happen is that we can look at uh, decreasing costs or cutting corners. What can we do to decrease cost, cut corners? Yeah, our revenue may go down some, but if our cost goes down more than that decrease in the revenue, that's something I also need to take a look at. Uh, and then the final one is what happens if I'm able to decrease cost and increase revenue at the same time. And those are things that we need to look at and evaluate and do those types of things as often as possible. And what we see with Redmond and, and Sweet Pro, our combination, our feed program, is we're actually decreasing our cost. We're seeing our hay and our forage uh, uh, last longer, the, so the cost is being reduced on that. Uh, better overall herd health, so the vet bills are going down. Uh, labor expense is going down. We're just putting blocks out once every uh, 10 days as opposed to feed and range cake or something like that where we're going out and uh, the use of the labor, the equipment, the fuel to buck the snow and, and all the um, expenses that go along with that. And then on the rev revenue side, we're seeing that that improved herd health. We're seeing the conception rates going up. Uh, we're seeing weaning weights, average daily gain going. We're seeing a better frame and muscle develop gain and um, looking at even getting some premiums from uh, buyers on, on cattle because that's the cattle aren't uh, being finished out. Uh, they're positioned well with excellent frame and muscle development to be able to be finished um, at the feedlot or we can actually grass fed fin finish with a sweet pro as well. So, um, so that kind of brings our formal presentation kind of uh, to an end. I know we've got a, a question here, so I'm going to connect on that uh, question. This is questions coming from Trevor Linneman over in um, southeast Nebraska, and his question is, how is it made harder and more bitter? And uh, the answer to that is uh, two things. One is, let's see, as, uh, let's see, I'll kind of highlight here on the side of this block, um, as you can see, this is cardboard that goes up the side of this and a, tr and a plastic tray on the bottom. Okay, so when they mix up their uh, dry ingredients and, and then they pull in the wet ingredients, some of the, their mineral packages uh, is liquid and some of the uh, condensed distiller solubles is liquid, the probiotin is liquid, they mix all that up and it's kind of like a, a sandy, um, kind of a 
damp or, or wet type sandy type material with the distiller's grains. That's all mixed up. They take 250 pounds of this and it drops into this cardboard sleeve and then they have a press that actually presses it in. So it's not cooked so it doesn't um, harm the, the enzymes or yeast at all. They press that and so the pressure on that uh, um, makes that a little bit harder and then uh, some of the ingredients that they put in on the harder, more bitter uh, blocks makes the block a little bit more hard. It, it sets up after about um, fully after about five days after it's manufactured. Uh, and then the other thing that they do is they add uh, ammonium sulfate and biuret uh, to the. Let me get back to. Uh, let me try to jump into choosing the right tub. Okay, so your Sweet Pro 16, your calf candy, anything to the left of the Sweet Pro 16 is all natural protein. There's no um, ammonium sulfate or biuret that's added. Uh, the, the FiberMate 18, FiberMate 20, and to the right, they add biuret and um, or ammonium sulfate. So a couple of quick things on that is that uh, th those are slow release um, nitrogen sources, so protein sources. Um, so totally safe for horses, although they're not able to utilize that, convert that to protein, but it doesn't harm them at all. Um, and it's better for cattle than the cheaper form of that is urea. Um, that is just a fast release and cattle are able to utilize that, but it's not the best uh, form, it's just a very cheap form of protein. So um, that biuret, ammonium sulfate, makes it more bitter. Um, I think it's magnesium oxide, I, don't quote me on that, but I think that's part of the uh, ingredient that makes it a little bit more hard, and then, um, and then actually the pressure. So hopefully that answers uh, your question there, Trevor, on that. Um, just look and see if they're okay. Okay, so uh, Linda has a question. Um, says, are horses considered a ruminant? Um, and then we didn't mention the prebiotic factors on that. So let me uh, go back to that. And that's a great question, Linda, because I don't think they're considered a ruminant, but their cecum acts like a rumen. So that's where we get into the, um, uh, to that aspect of it. Um, and, and so that cecum actually uh, responds basically the same as a rumen, and we've got to be really careful to keep that pH up uh, to that six, six and a half, and um, uh, as it goes into the cecum. I'm going to go back to, uh, let's see, what slide did I have on that? I think that's putting the, putting the, block together, jump in here, oh, that wasn't what I was looking for, okay, so so this this picture here, um, especially on the probiotin, so um, Linda's question is um, the prebiotics are actually food for the probiotics. So we are, we're utilizing um, the prebiotics and that's actually this yeast and enzymes and what's fermented here uh, comes into actually four classes of, of uh, prebiotics. Prebiotic oligosaccharides is what they're called. They're eight chain sugars that those microbes utilize and and feed on. So um, very excellent for
for uh, those healthy microbes. Let me down to that. that slide there with the uh, number and feeding of those microbes. Those microbes are actually your probiotics. The prebiotics are what's feeding those. And, um, and SweetPro has an excellent uh, whole four different classes of probiotics or prebiotics that's feeding those probiotics. And uh, one of them that you may be familiar with is um, You've heard of some products out there with Biomoss. Uh, it's a brand name. It's it's kind of the the uh, what they do is they take these yeast and they take the the shell of the yeast and they utilize that for for feed util, uh, utilization and value of that um, mannan oligosaccharide is what that is. Uh, well, in our yeast, yeast we have the full mannan oligosaccharide, the fructo oligosaccharide, xylo oligosaccharide. And um, those all just come in naturally with that probiotin, and uh, that's where we're getting the boost in that feed efficiency up to that 25%. All right, thanks, Linda, for your question. Um, all right, is there if there's other questions, I guess raise your hand. I see Trevor, your hands raised. Um, uh, not sure if you mean to have that there or not. Um, um, I guess you can type in your question. Okay. I think that's all the questions that we have. If you've got more questions, you can raise your hand. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, take us out and I need to get, uh, you'll be able to follow along on yours, but I'm getting outside of my presentation thing here uh, so that you'll be able to see. I won't be able to see your hand until I get done looking at this. Um, but I want to take you outside so you can see my desktop. And then I'm going to go to agribestfeeds.com. And I want to show you just a couple of things. Oh boy. Sorry about that. Okay. So now you're seeing the website, and I think I can control your screen. It looks like maybe. Yep, so it's controlling your screen. And I'm just scrolling down. And this um, video is the one that I wanted you to uh, know was there. Very excellent as far as um, it's a 28-minute video coming right from the creator of Sweet Pro and from our uh, nutritionist, Dr. Abe Schaefer. Um, and then down below that for your team ropers, We've got a commercial that fe features Clay Tryon. Uh, that's just a 30-second commercial there. Uh, place on here to like us on Facebook, follow us there. Um, but what I want to do is come up to uh, the top, and I'm going to click on the cattle as soon as it gets up to the top for everybody. I guess I'm watching this on another screen as well. Uh, click on the cattle tab, and that, okay, so that takes you over to our, our cattle uh, tab on there, and I want to scroll down here on the right side. This uh, brochure, it's a 24-page brochure. You can click on it and download it. It has all the um, gear, the analysis of all the different products. It has an excellent um, uh, breakdown of each of the different elements that go into uh, the product and, and why those are important, so forth, so on. So I really uh, recommend you uh, download that and take a, a look at that. 
but what I want to look at here is this net day cost when feeding Sweet Pro. So I want to click on that and open that. And this is an Excel program that comes down into your, um, that you can download. And what this does is it puts a little bit of kind of the dollars and cents onto, um, let's shrink that up just a little bit so we can get the full benefit on our page here. Okay, so anywhere in these gray boxes, you're able to um, put in the cost of the sweet pro. And uh, here in billings, our retail price on uh, pallet price is actually $105. So I'm going to put in $105 for 250-pound tub. Um, I'm going, everything's kind of average on my situation here, so I'm going to say I want to plan for one pound of daily consumption per cow per day. And so my day cost on my Sweet Pro is 42 cents. So it's going to cost me 42 cents. And you can figure another um, two to three cents a day for the Redmond free, free Choice out on the side. And that takes care of all your vitamin and mineral trace minerals. You don't need any other minerals out on the side. Takes care of your protein, your energy needs. Uh, you just have to have your um, forage on the side. Now, what we're seeing on, on mature cattle that are average score and um, good quality forage, we're seeing that they actually will eat up to 25% less forage. So if my cattle are normally eating about uh, 30 pounds of forage consumed per cow per day, and I can change any of, either of those numbers, but at this example, um, saving, they actually save up to seven um, and a half pounds of forage uh, that that cow may eat less in that day. And then the cost of that forage here on the cost of, of hay at $125 a ton, uh, your hay saving ends up being 47 cents per head per day. And then that drops you down to your net cost. Okay, so what is it? What's my net day cost for feeding Sweet Pro? In this example, then your net day cost is that you're actually putting a, a nickel in your pocket for every cow that you feed Sweet Pro uh, on a daily basis. Um, and so, once again, all of these are um, that you can change. So let's say we want to go down to three quarters of a pound on this, and um, you know got, that would end up putting 15 cents in in your pocket. Um, let's say maybe I'm on growing animals. Um, maybe I'm not going to get 25% hay savings. Maybe I'm only get 10% hay savings. Well, at 10% hay savings, my complete vitamin, mineral, trace mineral, full protein. Um, and getting all the value of the benefits on the left side, it, my net day cost would be um, uh, 13 cents a day. So hopefully that's a good um, um, worksheet that you can utilize as you evaluate your own uh, herd situation with that. So I'm going to go back to my program here. Okay, so is there, I guess, any questions? On on that, I can come back to see on where hands are, are raised there. Anything on that? And hopefully, Linda, that um, answered the cost analysis question that you had there. All right. I guess um, if there's other questions, um, let me know. I don't want to keep everybody. Um, want to answer any questions that people might have. Um, Sweet Pro is simple and it's better. So you can connect with us. Our, our direct line into our offices is 866 601 6646. 
you can visit visit us online to pick up those uh, that cost analysis sheet and the brochures and and that video at agribestfeeds.com. You can also find uh, your dealer in your particular area. You can click on the dealer tab and um, that'll find the uh, Agribest Feeds dealer. And if there's not one, just call us and we can uh, get you lined up with um, who's in that area or figure out how to get product directly to you. Any other questions at this point? I guess I'm, I'm done and rambling at this point. So if there's no other questions, I guess we'll end the webinar. Thanks so much, everyone, for attending. Um, we, uh, we certainly appreciate it. And um, we will see you all again next time. So thanks a bunch. Thanks a bunch. Bye.